I played 100 days of Stardew Valley, something no one's ever done before, and my one goal is to complete the community center within year one. That means every single day of this playthrough will need to be meticulously planned and executed. And, because I want this to be a test of my skill, not just RNG, I've checked the guarantee year one completable box so that red cabbage seeds are guaranteed to be sold by the traveling merchant. The only other thing to note is that I'll be using the UI Info Suite mod. Having information like Daily Luck, Queen of Sauce, and Traveling Cart Days right on the main screen is so useful to a challenge like this. Seriously, go get this mod. But with that out of the way, we start at Spring 1, Year 1. Day 1 starts as most playthroughs do. I grab my parsnips, clear some land, and immediately realize that 15 parsnips won't make me nearly enough money for my spring plans. Most notably, I need a steel axe before summer to gain access to the secret woods, as the morel, a mushroom needed for the exotic foraging bundle, only appears in the secret woods in spring. On top of the copper and iron requirements, a steel axe costs 7,000 gold in total. With this in mind, I rushed over to Pierre and handed him every spare cent in my wallet to turn into pure parsnip profit. In total, I planted 43 parsnips before calling it a day. On day two, I cleared a bit more farm area, mostly to get wood for a chest. Money will be tight for a while, so I'll be operating on the smallest inventory size for some time. I also ran down to Willy today and obtained the bamboo pole as well as the training rod for an extra 25 gold. It always rains on day 3, so if I'm lucky, I can get all the spring fish out of the way very early on. I caught a sunfish for the river bundle and headed back home with the whole list of fish needing to be caught tomorrow. Day 3 was the big fishing day. I needed the catfish and shad from the river, as well as a sardine and an eel from the ocean. Thankfully, the training rod made quick work of most of them, but the problem was the catfish. You see, the training rod isn't capable of catching some of the more difficult fish, catfish included. After some difficulty though, I managed to impress myself by catching a catfish my second try at level 1 fishing. Not bad. My fishing expeditions weren't quite done, so on day 4, after watering my crops, I headed straight to the mountain lake to get a few more fish, now that I had the season specific ones out of the way. I caught a bullhead and a chub. Upon returning home, I found my chest close to bursting, so I gathered the materials for a chest dedicated to my bundle items. On day 5, I was surprised to learn that not a single scarecrow got to my parsnips before they finished growing. I harvested everything, leaving aside one parsnip for the spring crops bundle and a gold parsnip for the quality crops bundle. I expanded my farmland before picking up all my spring crops from Pierre, as well as more parsnips for quality crops and extra potatoes for the money. This was also the first day the traveling cart came around, as it does every Friday and Sunday, but unfortunately it had nothing of interest. On day 6, I could finally make a scarecrow now that I was level 1 farming, and I'm just now realizing how lucky I was that I never saw a crow. I also went to the community center and took a quick glance at the tablet so the wizard would contact me. Aside from that though, the day was rather uneventful, I just cleared some land and headed off to sleep. Day 7 was the best day we've had so far, and that's because the cart was selling red cabbage seeds, an event I was terrified I would somehow miss. I was excited to say the least, and after this incredible find, I went to the wizard to gain forest magic or whatever. I just wanted to read the Junimal scrolls. I also took time today to delve into the mines real quick. I got to floor 10 and got almost 50 copper roar. This is probably the busiest day I've had yet. Day 8 started with a visit from everyone's least favorite villager, Clint. He gave me the recipe for furnaces to start melting my ore down into ingots. The highlight of the day was the completion of our first bundle, the spring foraging bundle. I also made it to floor 15 in the mines. I know it's not much, but we need at least floor 40 by mid-spring, so I'll take what progress I can get. On day 9, the parsnips were ready once again. At this point, I had 3 gold quality parsnips in total, and things were looking up. I also obtained the first of many copper bars today, which will be going towards a copper axe in the near future. I chopped down a few more trees, at this point I need sap for more fertilizer, and head to Pierre's once he's open to purchase hopefully my final batch of parsnips as well as a kale? I'll be honest, even now I'm not sure why I didn't go with something more profitable. I think this is the first time I've ever grown kale actually. Not important though, what's important is that hopefully this round will finish off the quality parsnips I need. 
I quickly plant and water the new crops before headed to bed around noon. On day 10, Marnie brought a stray cat around, and it didn't seem too riddled with disease, so I decided to keep it. Her name is Amy. After this lovely encounter, I spent some time chopping down pine trees. I wanted pine cones for field snacks. With no access to the spa, my only hope for some extra energy in this world is food, and I need to both tend to a farm and dig deeper in the mine. I spent the rest of the day fishing, trying to get to fishing level 5. See, I've been holding on to every fish I've caught, and once I get to level 5 fishing, I can get the fisher profession for an extra 25% selling price on my fish. At that point, I can sell my entire stock for massive profits, which I'm going to need if I want the steel axe. Today I reached level 3 fishing and planted some rice I found in a treasure chest. I also once again expanded my storage, but it's still far from organized. Day 11 and potatoes are ready, so I quickly harvest every single one and take them straight to Pierre. Just this small harvest got me back 50 more potato seeds. I don't know how much more I can realistically expand the farm, I've only got so much energy in a day before the spa opens. But for now I think of nothing but sweet sweet gold and put the potato seeds in the ground. I spent the rest of the day fishing and at this point I'm high enough level the bamboo pole works plenty well, which means extra profit from high quality fish. I'm gonna be real with you, days 12 and 13 are probably the most boring days of Stardew I've ever played. I did nothing but water my crops and fish for XP. I even skipped the egg festival on the 13th, I just don't have the time. Thankfully I finally hit fishing level 5 at just around midnight of day 13. On day 14 I somehow forgot to sell any of my fish, but no matter I can just do it tomorrow. For today I need to make some real progress in the mines. Daily luck was bad, but I needed iron fast. Floor 24 was infested and I was worried my progress would be halted, but one of the crates had this cool sword that did much more damage so I was able to make quick work of the slimes and progress all the way to floor 30 before going home. Day 15 was much of the same. I went down into the mines and started panicking when I ran out of energy on floor 39. With no better plan, I started clicking around madly in the dark until I stumbled upon an open ladder hidden in the darkness. Making it safely to floor 40, I went back home and actually remembered to sell off my fish this time before sleeping. And that's a lot of money. Bursting with gold on day 16, I decided that after tending to my crops, I should start upgrading my axe. And I picked up a few more potato seeds along the way. Once those were planted, I spent the rest of the day reset farming ore. If you didn't know, the way the mines work is that the floors reset whenever you take the ladder back to the surface. This way, you can keep safely dropping down to floor 41, checking for iron, rinse, and repeat. I ended up with 33 iron ore. On day 17, the vast majority of my potatoes were ready to harvest, as well as the cauliflower I needed for the spring crops bundle. I prepped the ground for all the new seeds I'd be coming home with, took my massive harvest over to Pierre, ready to exchange for so many new seeds, and... I hate Wednesdays. After shipping the potatoes intended to sell direct to Pierre, I decided to drown my sadness in bundle items, taking a large load of items to the community center and completing the spring crops bundle. On day 18, my copper axe was ready, so after preparing land for more potatoes, again, I ran all the way to Clint's, got the axe, and handed it right back to him for the steel upgrade. I picked up 75 potato seeds on the way home and planted all of them. It's becoming a lot to water. Day 19 starts with 500 gold from dad. Always nice to get free gold. I happen to remember that a few days ago I stumbled on a quest from Marnie saying she wanted a green bean, so I decided to take one to her. I don't know if I was too late or something, but giving her the bean just acted like a normal gift, so whatever I guess. It was raining on day 20 and my axe was ready. I headed to Clint's, got the axe, and made my way into the secret woods where several morels were waiting for me. Glad I got that checked off the list. I spent most of my energy back at the farm chopping down trees. I've not been great about collecting resources so far, so I need to get on that. I decided to try my luck at reset farming some copper and ended up with a crab and the first dwarf scroll. The Queen of Sauce was showing on day 21, and I learned how to make radish salad. I'm going to need all these recipes if I ever want to get this farm to perfection. I didn't do much today. I reset farmed for a bit of copper, smelted some, and called it an early night. Day 22 marked the beginning of the end of spring, as there wasn't going to be enough time to grow another round of potatoes. I harvested what was ready, and nearly went mining before determining it was probably best to hold off on that. Instead, I went to the beach and got a clam. Slow start, but eventually the crab prop bundle will be mine. Once again, I called it an early night. 
Day 23 was rather uneventful. I tried and failed to fish for a wood skip, so I took the rest of the bundle fish to the community center. Day 24 was the last harvest of the season, and what a harvest it was, probably the most potatoes I've seen in these hundred days. Unfortunately, once again, it was Wednesday, so I put them all in the shipping bin. I made an attempt to make progress in the mine, but luck wasn't on my side. Demetrius met me at my door the morning of day 25, and of course, like any rational person, I opted for the fruit bat cave. This is how we'll be completing the artisan bundle if all goes to plan. I spent the day in the mines, but my luck was bad, and I only made it to floor 45. Day 26 gave me even worse luck, but I pressed on anyway and made it to floor 50. Five levels isn't bad for this kind of luck. I decided to open some geodes and donated enough items to Gunther to get some free melon seeds, which will be useful here in a few days. I have some bad news. Day 27 is the third day in a row that I only made it five floors down in the mine. My problem here is the lack of food to refill energy. I really should have held on to a few potatoes. Day 28, I needed a change of pace, so I avoided the mines today. Instead, I learned how to make an omelette and spent way too much money on a large egg at the traveling merchant. I spent the rest of the day smelting iron down. Day 29 marked the start of summer, and I had so much to do. I wanted a full 4x4 grid of quality sprinklers, which can accommodate up to 128 crop tiles. On top of this, I wanted extra space for my melons and summer crops. Keeping this in mind, I tilled an absolutely massive area before going to Pierre's. My plan for summer money was blueberries, because they're hands down the best crop for year one summer. I wasn't sure I'd have the energy to water everything today, but luckily I managed to just get by thanks to some extra spring forage. I may have made a mistake, just look at how much energy it takes to water this place. I need to get working on sprinklers and fast, but before that my storage is a complete mess, so I took some time to color code and expand just a bit. Much better. I finally remembered to check the bat cave which was full to bursting, and afterwards I decided I should upgrade my pick. Unfortunately, Clint locked up the second I got to his door. On day 31 there was a massive rock slide in the night, seemingly out of nowhere, and now I have the solution to my energy problem. The spa is the location that always unlocks on the 3rd of summer, and allows you to quickly restore energy by standing still in the water. Also, it would appear Lewis lost his shorts. Not sure why I would want to know that, but I'm sure this will be useful information later. Anyhow, with renewed energy from the spa, I started into the mines and got to floor 60. Even more exciting though is what I found on floor 59. The lead rod is an incredible weapon I found this early on, and will make a great replacement for my current sword. A thunderstorm was in full swing by the start of day 32, so thankfully the massive task of watering was relieved for the day. I had alright luck, so I decided more mining couldn't hurt. I made it all the way to level 75, and on top of that found yet another weapon on floor 74, the bone sword. After some deliberation, I decided to switch out my lead rod as the bone sword did a tiny bit more damage. Day 33, I finally made it to floor 80. This is where gold starts to appear, the last ingredient I need for my sprinklers. The traveling merchant was also selling a duck egg, which I bought. Not sure why I bought it, I'm still going to need a duck for the duck feather, but too late to worry about that now. Now that I had access to gold, I spent all of day 34 reset farming gold ore, as well as quartz whenever it showed up. Ultimately, I'm going to need 18 sprinklers, which is 90 gold ore, 90 iron ore, and 18 quartz in total. Today, I got 71 gold ore. Day 35, I learned baked fish from the ever-wonderful Queen of Sauce, went to reset farm more gold, and very nearly died for the first time in this playthrough. Thankfully, I just barely survived, and healed up in the spa before finishing out the day reset farming copper for more furnaces. On day 36, I finally bought the seeds I needed for the summer crops bundle, and spent all day smelting gold, iron, and quartz, and had almost all my sprinklers by the end of the day. Seeing the sprinklers at work the morning of day 37 was one of the most beautiful sights I've ever seen. I finished the last few sprinklers and watered the final few crops by hand for the last time. Riding the incredible high of farm automation, I completed the entire boiler room in one go. I'd had most of the resources for a while, but finally completing the bundles unlocks minecarts, one of the most useful modes of transportation in the game. This has been one of the most productive days so far. Day 38, I realized I needed to start fishing. There's a whole new cast of fish I need to catch before summer ends, and we're already 10 days in. So I took my fishing rod and spent all day fishing. 
I caught the red snapper, tilapia, and tuna. I also found a grape, the last item we need for the summer crops bundle. On day 39, I considered going to the luau, but with nothing to contribute to the soup, I decided it may be best to continue work on the bundles instead. After watching Krobus scar a few kids for life, I visited the secret woods to get a fiddlehead fern, and managed to get an orange and a pomegranate from the fruit bat cave. The traveling merchant was kind on day 40, and I got both the sandfish and a large brown egg. At this point in time, I realized I hadn't put any time at all into setting up for animals, so I commissioned a silo from Robin. I also planted the sunflower seeds I'm gonna need for the dye bundle. On day 41, the melons were ready to harvest, three of which were gold quality. After replanting new melon seeds, I spent the day mining for copper, iron, and gold. I also gave foraging on the beach another go, but somehow there's still nothing new to contribute to the crab pot bundle. Day 42 starts with possibly the dumbest decision I've ever made. I went down to the traveling cart and managed to pick up the wood skip, then stare directly at the exact item I need for the crab pot bundle before just leaving, somehow deciding it just wasn't worth it. This would definitely come back to haunt me later on. Regardless, my first harvest was today and it sold for over 20,000 gold, which is very good news if I want to get a coop and barn going. I even had enough to finally upgrade my backpack. I also spent some time today fishing for pufferfish, but I had no luck. Day 43 and I'm finally starting on a coop, admittedly much later than I should have. That's okay though, as long as I'm quick with getting things upgraded, I should be fine. I also decided that now that I had a silo, I should stock it with hay. I could have just used the normal scythe, but instead I decided to break the game. It's actually fairly easy to clip out a bounce here and access the golden scythe quite early. Thanks to this little trick, I was able to fill my entire silo before heading to bed. On day 44, I took a whole backpack of items to the community center, unfortunately not quite completing any new bundles. I also picked up the fiberglass rod and some bait and decided to finally fix this small bridge while I was here. No pufferfish today, but soon. The pufferfish was finally mine day 45, and thanks to the new fancy fishing rod, I managed to catch a ghost fish in the mines as well. These days are starting to get shorter. On day 46, all I did was start getting my pickaxe upgraded to copper. Thankfully, day 47 was much more eventful. The tomatoes were finally ready, the last crop needed for the summer crops bundle, and the traveling merchant was very helpful with a duck feather and a lobster. I guess this time I decided the crab pot bundle was important. I also started work on the barn and finally finished the construction bundle. I planted some wheat and headed off to sleep. I took another load of items to the community center day 48 and finished the specialty fish, dye, and summer crops bundles. I picked up my new copper pick and went mining for iron for the next upgrade. On day 49, the queen of sauce blessed me with the ability to make maki rolls, one of the items needed for the chef bundle. I also started on the steel pickaxe upgrade and considered buying a chicken, but ultimately decided there were higher priorities right now. Don't ask, I'm not sure why I held off on the chickens either. Day 50, the blueberries were ready for harvesting, so after absolutely robbing Pierre with my blueberry prices, I managed to finish up the exotic foraging bundle. I also took the time to finally get the last two fish I needed for the lake bundle. Day 51 was a very busy day, starting with collecting the wheat for the fodder bundle. I headed down to Clint's to get my new steel pick and broke down a lot of the large rocks on the farm before having Robin start on the upgraded barn. I also expanded the farm and planted the corn I would need next season. Another short one on day 52, I tried and failed once again to find new forage on the beach and bought a cow on the way home. Day 53 provided the last couple gold quality melons I needed, and without time to plant anything new before fall, I had an early night. Blueberries had their final harvest day 54, and honestly days 55 and 56 I did nothing but fail to find any new beach forage waiting for fall. Day 57 and fall is here, so while waiting for Pierre to open, I craft some fertilizer and prepare the ground for all the seeds I'm gonna need. My plants for this farm are a little ambitious, but to complete the community center we're gonna need the money. I ended up buying 175 cranberry seeds, and since the last thing I need is to lose the fall crops bundle to a stray lightning bolt, I bought two of every fall bundle crop. I still had some time to hit the mines after planting the new crops, and I finally found a purple mushroom, one of the few items I was worried I wouldn't find in time. 
I wanted to get fishing out of the way early, so on day 60 I went out and caught the last two fish needed, the tiger trout and walleye. I finished their respective bundles, and now I just need one crab pot bundle item to finish the fish tank. Day 61 was a very lucky day. The traveling cart was selling large goat milk, and I was very excited. I also took the cheese from yesterday and the last of the fall forage to the community center to finish off a couple more bundles. Afterwards, I decided it was finally time to get a chicken. It was also at this point I began to panic about having the animals I need in time, more specifically the pig and rabbits. On day 62, I once again failed to find any beach forage. You'll find from here on out most of the days are quite short, as there's a lot of waiting involved for the last few community center items. As much as I'd love to take the time to improve the farm at this point, I found it a struggle to focus on anything more than the community center. Oh well, more content for the next 100 days I suppose. On day 63 I learned how to make tortillas before tending to my animals. Right now I'm just waiting on money for a deluxe barn. Unfortunately waiting for money becomes a common theme throughout the season. Day 64 had the first cranberry harvest, and my chicken started producing eggs. It grew up much quicker than expected, but I'm not going to sit here and complain. The cranberries also did much better than I expected, selling for over 30,000 gold altogether. Finally, I have the money for the last barn upgrade. I'm really cutting it close. I need an adult pig before winter starts for the truffle. I cleared a lot of land day 65. I'm gonna need a lot of resources for the coop upgrades later on, and the more wood I can gather now, the less I'll have to pay later on. Unfortunately, I can't do much more now except wait for the next harvest so I can afford a pig. On day 66, I finally found the oyster that would complete the crab pot bundle. I also chopped down several more trees for the wood. Day 67, the first fall bundle crops were ready, specifically the eggplants and yams. I decided to take all the bundle items I had to the community center, completing the crab pot, animal, and quality crops bundles. With that, the fish tank was finally complete, one step closer to completion. I spent the rest of the day mining for iron. I started preparing for the greenhouse day 68, as I'm only one pumpkin short of completing the pantry. I spent all day smelting down the ore and quartz I need for more sprinklers. Day 69 started with the next cranberry harvest, and I immediately spent all the money on 100 cranberry seeds for the greenhouse as well as a pig. I'm hoping this thing grows up fast or else I'm entirely screwed. The apple tree started producing day 70, which brings me one step closer to completion. Aside from the cooking recipes needed for the chef's bundle, the last few items are entirely a waiting game. I can't worry about that right now though. I managed to stumble upon the prismatic jelly quest, and the monster musk recipe would be amazing for perfection later on. Unfortunately, it only had one day left, and I couldn't find a single prismatic slime. When I got home, I realized my pumpkins were ready, so I made a midnight run out to the community center to complete the pantry. Day 71, I made all the fertilizer I could and started filling out the greenhouse. It took me most of the day to till, water, and plant all the seeds I picked up a few days prior. Afterwards, I decided I should probably put a fence around the barn for when the pig starts producing truffles. Days 72 and 73 were both short days. I just took care of the farm while waiting on the next cranberry harvest. On day 74, the cranberries were ready again. I still need rabbits as quickly as I can get them for the rabbit's foot, so I went immediately into upgrading the coop. Day 75, I finally got the artisan profession, so I can start selling things like cheese. I also realized I need a fish for the maki roll, so I went out and grabbed that real fast. I sold all the cheese I had made on day 76, and started the deluxe coop upgrade. Now the only thing still needing an upgrade is my house, and that can be done later. The Queen of Sauce was on again day 77 and taught me glazed yams. I spent all day on the farm today, just chopping more trees and tending to the animals. Today was another quick one. The greenhouse cranberries had their first harvest day 78, and they managed to sell for over 20,000 gold. These will be my main source of income over winter, so I'm glad it's already producing. I also decided I should get a fence down around the coop so that I don't lose track of all the rabbits I'll be getting soon. On day 79, the pig was finally an adult, with several days left to produce a truffle before winter. Thankfully, I didn't have to wait long, as I found a truffle later the same day, shortly after harvesting the cranberries. I held on to all the money I got from the cranberries. The more rabbits I can buy, the higher chance I have at a rabbit's foot. 
Day 80, I went to Marnie's. I only expected to get six rabbits, but it turns out I had enough gold for seven. I was very happy with this amount. On day 81, I upgraded my home, and now I just wait for winter for the last few community center items. I'm very worried about the rabbit's foot. I can easily get everything else, but I'm going to need very good luck to get the rabbit's foot in time. I did absolutely nothing day 82, so on day 83 I harvested the greenhouse cranberries and spent literally all day standing around waiting for the Spirit's Eve festival. I need to meet as many people as possible so the bulletin board reward can give me friendship for everyone. On day 84 I woke up in a much larger house. Today is the last harvest of our main farm, and now that my house is upgraded I can finally make the recipes needed for the chef bundle. With the money from the cranberries, I not only completed the chef bundle, but the entire vault room as well. Here's where I made an incredible mistake. I played an entire 15 days without realizing I forgot to start recording. At this point, I had a choice. I had a backup of the save from back in fall, and I could go back and do it all again. Or I could just insert a quick summary of what happened in those 15 days. I was going to revert to the old save, but I've never completed the community center year one. And if I do, I don't want it to be because I had an unfair advantage being able to replay such a large portion of the year. Unfortunately, we're just going to have to do without the next 15 days, so here's a quick recap. I finished winter foraging pretty early on, as well as finding a nautilus shell on the beach. At this point, I just needed a rabbit's foot, and I'm done. Rabbits produce wool every four days, with a rare chance of producing rabbit's feet instead as a function of friendship and luck. I got the rabbits in time to get three rounds of produce before the end of the 100 days. Unfortunately, they never produced a rabbit's foot. At this point, my only shot is to farm serpents in Skull Cavern, which is where we pick up on day 99. I'm all prepped to go into the school mines for day 99, and after annoying Pam to get her to the bus faster, I headed straight to the desert to take on the caverns. I spent all day farming serpents, using a bit of cheese I held onto to maintain my health. Unfortunately, after all day, I had not a single rabbit's foot to show for my efforts. Day 100 should have been celebratory, having completed the community center. Instead, I found myself back in the caverns, searching for the one item that still eluded me. I really wish this video could have ended with the last minute rabbit's foot to save the day, but sometimes it just doesn't work that way. I may have been just short of the community center in these 100 days, but my goal was always to complete it within year one, which isn't over yet. I hate to leave you with the cliffhanger, but I'm already recording the footage for the next 50 days, and the video is set to release next week. As much as I'd love to do another 100 days all at once, this video took over 50 hours in total to produce, which isn't sustainable for a weekly video. If you want to be notified when the next 50 days go live, remember to hit subscribe. And hey, if you enjoyed this video, consider throwing a like my way, because from this point on we're shooting for perfection.